Canon has currently two RF zoom lenses that are quite interesting for bird photography and wildlife photography in general, in my opinion. On one hand, we have the very cheap and lightweight RF 100 to 400, f5.6 to f8. And on the other side, we have the more professional build RF 100 to 500 millimeters f4.5 to 7.1 L lens. And I got a lot of questions from you guys via email, Instagram, YouTube about the recommendation of which of the two lenses to buy because quite frankly speaking the price differences is enormous. This one you can pick up new for around 650 US dollars whereas this one currently retails for around 2700 so it's a huge difference and even though some of you were more leaning to this lens you were also kind of skeptical. Uh, f8 at 400 millimeters can you still get a nice background blur on the other hand is f7.1 so much better how is it dealing in low light situations both regarding the image quality autofocus and so on and in this video i wanted to test just that i did a lot of side by side comparisons i went to the field with both lenses and to make a really thorough test uh, in different lighting situations and so on, I actually bought the RF 100 to 400 millimeter lens just for this review. So I really hope it's useful for you. Let's start with the specs and the handling of the lenses. So the 100 to 400 millimeter has a maximum aperture of 5.6 to 8, whereas the 100 to 500 has a larger aperture of 4.5 uh, to 7.1. And I would say that's the main reason why there is quite a bit of size difference in the two lenses. And you can also feel the difference in weight quite a lot. So this one weighs around 635 grams, whereas this one is uh, 1365 grams without the tripod collar attached. Um, that's basically double the weight um, so that's something to consider as well as the length of the two lenses so without the lens hold and in the kind of shortest setting meaning both zoomed at 100 millimeters this one is 16.5 centimeters long whereas the 100 to 500 comes at uh, 20.8 centimeters so depending on how much space if you have in your backpack this might be something to consider as I already mentioned, none of them have internal zoom, meaning both of them extend if you zoom. Um, this might be important if you shoot from a gimbal, because the weight distribution will change. Personally, I don't think many people will use these two lenses from a tripod, but um, I wanted to mention this. And there is always a bit the concern that, of course, weather sealing could be a bit worse with a lens that is extending and retracting this tubus. But as I said, both lenses share this feature. Something else that both lenses have in common is that they can be used quite nicely for the occasional macro shots. So both have a near minimum focal distance of uh, 1.2 meters when extended to their maximum zoom uh, setting of 400 or 500 millimeters respectively. And with the 100 to 400 lens, this gives you a maximum magnification of 0.41. The RF 100 to 500 is actually slightly worse. It gives you a maximum magnification of 0.33. Especially if you do some occasional landscape pictures and you want to use a polarization or a ND filter, um, they have different diameters of the filter thread. So here it's a 67 millimeter filter thread, whereas on the 100 to 500 it's a 77 millimeter filter thread. The RF 100 to 500 comes with an additional uh, tripod color that I attached now because I'm never using it but it's there and also included is a lens hood. Um, the RF 100 to 400 has neither. I don't mind not it not having the tripod collar. It's so lightweight you can just put it on the mount it on the camera itself if you need it on a tripod. I still think this will not be used so often. Um, on the other hand the missing lens hood I think this is a bit a pity and I get it it's a cheap lens but come on Canon um, it's a bit more plastic I think this should be included. In terms of switches and control rings that are available uh, we have here an AF MF switch on the 100 to 400 a stabilizer on off switch and on the other side we can lock the zoom ring I actually never use this because as you can see it's really not extending without me forcing it and this lock switch can only be engaged at 100 millimeters not at any other focal length in front we have a 
quite nice uh, focus ring. It's the size is quite decent in my opinion. And in the front, the control ring where you can program whatever function you want. And for this lens, at least for my taste, all of these uh, rings or dials that you can turn are in the perfect position. I can easily reach them when I'm taking pictures. If we now switch to the 100 to 500, we have a focus limiter, so we can decide if the camera should look for the focus point between the 1.2 meters and infinity, or if we want to limit it for three meters to infinity. This might be nice if you're more for, um, going for flying birds, or if you're shooting through some vegetation, um, that the focus cannot be, uh, yeah, cannot, it's not trying to focus on something closer. I'm actually having it on the full for 99% of the time of the shooting because it just works well with like this and then I don't need to think about changing it at some point. Um, of course, we also have the MF, AF, MF switch. We have the stabilizer switch and the stabilizer modes or so one, two and three. There is no more buttons on the other side. So let's get to the different rings that we have. Um, right here, quite close to the camera is the um, RF control ring where you can again put any function you want. I find it a bit in a weird position. Um, I think probably you're supposed to use this with your right hand, but I'm not sure because with the left hand, it's really hard to reach. Um, just after is the focus ring, which is also from my taste a bit too far behind um, because the next thing here is a ring where you can set the zoom, the kind of the friction of the zoom from smooth to tight. So on tight, it needs a bit more force. If I put it too smooth, it goes quite easily, sometimes too easy, so I usually put this completely too tight. However, I need to say, somehow it keeps changing without me wanting to change it. So I think this happens if I put the camera in the backpack, it moves a bit. Um, that's a bit unfortunate. And again, I never change this or I never want to change this. So I would have preferred if Canon would have switched these two. Anyway, on front we have the zoom ring, which is quite big. And yeah, I think there's not much more to say at this point. Let's start with one of the most important topics, the image quality. So first I did some kind of studio test in my apartment about the sharpness of both lenses. And I tested them at 200, 400 and 500 millimeters. Of course, with this one, I cannot zoom to 500 millimeters, but in some situations you might want to want a bit more uh, focal length. So what I did is I zoomed the 100 to 500 to 500 millimeters, this one to 400 millimeters, and then just cropped a bit um, just to see how well it holds up. So let's start with 200 millimeters. You see the full test scene here, and then let's zoom in in the middle. And here we have quite a significant difference, I would say. The 100 to 500 is much sharper. And if we zoom to the edge of the frame, it's not the corner, just the edge, um, it's even more pronounced. If we then go to 400 millimeters, I need to say in the center of the image, they look quite comparable. The 100 to 500 has a slight edge, but it's nothing crazy. And if we go to the edge of the frame, the uh, 100 to 500 is resolving clearly more details and more contrasts. Finally, the test at 500 millimeters or for the 100 to 400, the cropped 400 millimeters. Here, of course, we see a bigger difference that the 100 to 500 is sharper. But to be honest, I was expecting almost that the difference would be larger than this. Of course, image quality is much more than just image sharpness. It's also about the look of the picture, about the background. And we will come this to this in a minute about how it performs in backlit and so on. So from the image look, I had the feeling that I preferred the colors and rendition of the 100 to 500. It's a bit hard to describe, but I just want to show you the picture of this common merganser um, that I took with the 100 to 400 and 100 to 500. And for me, somehow the colors of the 100 to 500 just seem a bit nicer. Of course, the background is also blurrier, but I really feel like the colors are a bit smoother. It's hard to describe, but uh, yeah, make up your own mind. That's why I did the test images. Then uh, if we look at the performance in backlit, I tried both and I need to say both work very well. I was pleasantly surprised of how well the 100 to 400 was holding up. Depending on the angle, you might get a bit more lens flares. I felt like again, the colors were not as good as the 100 to 500. And I had it once or twice that I had like a horizontal, uh, like a band or stripe where the light was cut off. And this is most likely just due to the missing lens hood. So, yeah, maybe I should have bought one for this test, but I really think Canon should include one. If you buy this lens, I would recommend you maybe investing in a lens hood. 
Many of you also wrote me about the background blur that you can achieve with the two lenses and were really concerned that with the 100 to 400 you cannot do so much. So again I did a test in my apartment where the camera was fixed on a tripod and then I was just um, like swapping the lens so the distance was always the same. I started with 200 millimeters and you can see that the 100 to 500 is having a bit uh, blur, blurrier or nicer, smoother background. If we zoom into 400 millimeters, again at the maximum aperture of both lenses, uh, it's the same picture, the 100 to 500 is a bit nicer but nothing crazy. And then if we do again the test at 500 millimeters for the 100 to 500 and the, uh, at 400 cropped to the same viewing angle as 500 millimeters with the 100 to 400. This is where we see uh, the biggest difference, which was also to be expected. But even here, I need to say, I was almost expecting that the difference would be bigger. So studio tests can be nice because you can really control the parameters, but I'm sometimes also wondering, can you really translate them one-to-one -to, -one to the real world? So what I tried is to take pictures of a real duck outside with both lenses and see if the results are still kind of the same. And to my surprise, no, there were not. So you can see it with this image here. Um, I took the pictures just after each other. I had both my R5s with both lenses attached, so I just swapped them. The distance to the duck didn't change, the light didn't change, the background didn't change. And you can see that the difference between 400 and 500 millimeters is quite clear here. That's the first thing. Second thing, the background blur is much nicer on the 100 to 500. Third thing, the difference in sharpness is also quite noticeable. And I did more, more tests with other birds afterwards, but why was this not happening so clearly in the studio test? And then it occurred to me, maybe you remember in the beginning of the video, I was saying that the 100 to 400 is actually the back better macro lens, it has a better magnification. And the studio tests, I was doing them at maybe around four meter distance. So this is still in a quite close um, focus distance. It's not exactly macro, like 1.2 meters, but it's still rather close. So there it's, the, yeah, it's not doing too bad. And if you go out in the real world, shoot an animal that is like 10, 15 meters away or 20, then the differences get more pronounced. As I said, I did more additional tests and I also got some help. So we were two people each shooting one of the cameras. So with a burst of pictures, so we had a series of the duck, same duck swimming by. So you can see here, it's really the same moment uh, to a split second actually. And yeah, I think it's still the same picture as with the image before. The 100 to 500 is a bit sharper. It's not crazy, but it's a bit sharper. Background is nicer. And I still somehow feel like also the colors are a bit smoother. Now I say this with every lens and camera that I test, the best image quality doesn't matter if the autofocus is not performing well or not harmonizing with the camera or whatever. And I need to say I bought the 100 to 500 more than a year ago, so I know this lens quite well. Uh, I've been always happy with the autofocus performance. Um, so if I compare the 100 to 400 to the 100 to 500, I can say that it's actually quite similar. I have the feeling the animal eye detection autofocus works a bit better with the 100 to 500. It's tracking the animal better. Also, if I shoot a series of pictures and not with a crazy movement, but just a tiny bit of movement, uh, I get more pictures in focus with the 100 to 500. So with the 100 to 500, virtually all of them are tech sharp. And with the 100 to 400, I just had the feeling some of them, it just missed the focus a tiny bit. I was also trying it a bit in low light and both were performing well. When the subject was completely defocused, the 100 to 400 was actually better with the eye animal de detection autofocus to uh, yeah detect the, the bird again and focus the bird. I think this is mostly due to the fact that the 100 to 400 has a, a larger depth of field and therefore if the animal is defocused, it's not as defocused as with the 100 to, 400, uh, 100 to 500, so it's easier for the camera. But anyway, in one situation, this one even had the edge. Um, when I was shooting backlit with some uh, flares in the water, the 100 to 400 got somehow more distracted by the flares. The autofocus was not performing so well. The animal eye autofocus was sometimes going for the flares. Um, the 100 to 500 was doing better here. But if I switched the, on the 100 to 400 back to the spot autofocus or the single point autofocus without any tracking, then it was actually on a quite similar level. And 
definitely a good performance. So I need to say this is no comparison, for example, to a Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary. The autofocus here is just much, much better. I'm personally not a big fan of tripods because I feel like they slow me down, I lose flexibility and this especially holds true if I have lightweight lenses like these ones here. So I wanted to see how good the image stabilization is. So I did a test uh, where I was just hand holding the lens. I zoomed all the way to 400 mm on this lens and to this one also at 400 to keep it even. I used the electronic shutter to avoid shutter shock and I used 1 15th of a second. So with the image stabilizer off, I got around five pictures that were not sharp, but not completely blurry. I would say kind of usable. And 95% of the images were just blurry. Then with the 100 to 400 and the image stabilizer engaged, I got like 32% of the pictures that were tech sharp and around 68% of the pictures that were still okay-ish. With the uh, 100 to 500, we got a very similar picture. So 29% of the images tech sharp and around 71% that are still okay. So I think this is a bit within the error of the measurement of the test. I would not give any uh, tick or any win to one of these bodies. Both have an amazing image stabilizer. What I realized when going through the pictures was that the ones that were not tech sharp, but still okay, were actually a bit sharper on the 100 to 400. And I think this is not due to differences in the image stabilizer, but probably because the lens is a bit lighter and therefore I, I move it a bit less. Anyway, conclusion, both offer really great image stabilization. I usually don't go down to 1 15th of a second. This is true. For birds, I usually use 1 30th of a second or shorter. And this is already really if they are stationary and I have not much light available. Most of the times I move around the well, I don't know, 800th of a second. But sometimes I feel if I have like a weird shooting position, like something like this, just to get a specific angle or a specific background, of course, like this, I'm more shaky. So here, even a hundredth of a second might be similar to a 15th of a second where I really hold the camera still and even press my, uh, my forehead or my eye against the viewfinder. And as always, don't compare these tests to some tests that you did with your camera, with your lens. You are completely different than me. Uh, you might have much shakier or much steadier hands. I would not even compare this test that I do now to one that I do in a few weeks. It's really a test that you can only compare at the same time and it's only a relative test for these two and they basically perform the same. So if you're not so much into shy birds or mammals but want to go more for reptiles, amphibians, larger insects such as, such as uh, dragonflies, maybe damselflies, uh, amphibians. Which one is the better lens then? Actually, I feel like almost this one here because you have the higher magnification of 0 0.4 compared to 0 0.33. And you can see in this picture that the difference is actually noticeable. It's not huge, but it's noticeable. And if I shoot amphibians at a pond, I sometimes want to go really have a really low angle. And I'm again in this weird shooting position. I think here the lighter 100 to 400 actually can be nicer than the 100 to 500. But let's go back to more mammals, um, birds and wildlife in general. Which one is the better lens? Well, for me it's quite clear it's the 100 to 500. But I think this is the wrong question. The right question should be for whom is the 100 to 500 worth it? And I think here it depends on several things. Um, one of the things is, do you care about a nice blurry background? Some people tell me they don't care. They, they just want to take a nice picture of the bird and if the background is a bit clearer or blurrier, it's not so important for them. The other thing, of course, is how much money do you have available and do you want to spend on a lens? Um, if, ma if you're a bit tight on money, the 100 to 400 might be a nice, the better choice, just a wiser choice. Um, if you can afford the 100 to 500 but just barely i would maybe rather get the 100 to 500 with a cheaper camera than a more expensive camera and the 100 to 400 so cheaper camera would be instead of an r5 an r6 mark ii or maybe even an r6 so for me the 100 to 500 was definitely worth it but i'm still impressed of how good image quality uh, autofocus stabilizer this 100 to 400 provides and when i was going through the pictures for this review um, I had some that I was just thinking, ah, yeah, the 100 to 500 is really a nice lens, nice background blur, despite the f7.1. 
And then I looked at the EXIF and realized, oops, this was 400 millimeters f8. It was it was this lens, the RF 100 to 400. Of course, if you see them side by side, it's obvious. But I want to say that the right technique can sometimes make a bigger difference than the lens that you actually use. So if you want to get the most out of your camera or lens, then please check out my ebook, A Guide to Better Bird Pictures. Um, I put the link below. And if the video was helpful and I kind of helped you avoiding to buy the wrong lens uh, and spend a lot of money on the wrong lens, then maybe you can consider giving me a super thanks. This would really help me. And if you don't want to spend any extra money, I completely understand. But if you're in the market for one of these lenses, maybe consider using one of the affiliate links for buying them. I put them in the video description. Um, you don't pay a single cent more, but it helps me to continue with these reviews. Because as I said, I bought the 100 to 400 just for the YouTube review. So this would be a great help. Otherwise, the thumbs up always works. And see you in the next video.